<laughs> well, how do you go in the house and, and take some feathers out and not be caught by your tail feathers? Well, he, he, was, he, he did get caught eventually. Well, he did it with his car. <laughs> how could the fire help him inside a house? It says right here, he used his husband to steal feathers. Truly the soul of a poet, I must yeah. say. <laughs> do that. <laughs> You have my sympathies. I always nick right here on my lip, but you obviously go over yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> it's been bleeding for an hour. Oh, God. Thanks to Zarata. Uh huh. Here's an extra thing. Switch yeah, back to my. Yeah. 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 Is there a way she closed the door? No, we died. We'll die then. No. No? No? No, but we get loud. Have you been here since Saturday? When the kids are doing their card oh. thing, it, they okay. get raucous, and it, you know, it just, it's the way it goes. You got lots of copies. I guess you're next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I've seen that shrug before. Are you keeping one for yourself? I wonder, what place are we here? I think they're not here. This is not here. <laughs> <laughs> you think it'll make it all the way around? The shrug is not appropriate. The machine did it on its own. It was a, it, you can, uh, even, you can even make it stop printing you, a damn thing. You can use those to print your next poem. Oh, no, that's right, yeah. And, but I, I almost printed 144 today, but I caught myself because it's a very oh, sensitive to those buttons. library, though. So, yes. I don't know. Oh, yeah, keep on <laughs> Did you keep one for yourself? <laughs> I think she did. No. <laughs> I have one right here. You did it. You no. gave it to me. Oh, <laughs> I'll be here in a few minutes. <laughs> okay. Take two, they're small. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I didn't take one. This is, this is, this is one pile. But I think I'll be in a I think you'll be in a I'm not worried. <coughs> we can go around again a few more times. This work has been done appropriately. I didn't do this. The machine did this to me. Okay. A rumpf, a rumpf. On the way by, we'll get it. Next a time you walk by, kick it. <laughs> but I've been mean, thanking the machine. Kind of thing, if it doesn't, then the copy school prior to this, it should be, I mean, it should be cherry to me. Okay. <laughs> Eugenics. Or her legacy on an arthropod level. Oh. Wow, Larry, you made it here before me. <laughs> oh, there's no chair there? No. Two here, though. That's okay. If you hand me a chair. Well, three here, though. Did you see the eugenics that way on purpose? Should we, I shouldn't do it. Why is it you don't want to be near the camera? It's my business. Well, no, it isn't because you messed all the rest of it. Some of it is. Calm down, please. We're in with the good air, out with the bad. I could hyperventilate that way and fall out of my chair. Well, they'd be quiet anyway, though. <laughs> Seldom <Some> happens. <laughs> yeah, you just was spelled incorrectly. I apologize, but the machine did not, the typewriter was not in, in any biological mood, I guess. So machines are against me. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's a conspiracy, but I've known all along that they're conspiring against me. Did you just Will you pass that one more time? Do you have any? I got one. It's a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. I'll pass it off to Early in the morning, for summer's heat had unfurled, my solitary hand has crowed me awake. I arise, and the bold eye would not go back to normal print. I kept doing it at the print. <laughs> I arise. I'm not doing the rural eye, but the eye arise. Dress, feed dogs at breakfast, and put, I'm putting on old shoes. Venture outside amongst the beginning speculations of our und undesirables. Ghost white, emerging from their brown carapace, and slowly they expand. I course surging through their circulatory system. Into large, robust adults who will fly to, to the trees, big singing, signing, or signing, singing. In a furious pre coital frenzy. I nabbed them, nabbed them to feed my hand, and my dogs patrol snuffing through the grass to pick them out and gobble them up. I harvest a dawn, noon, and dusk. 
Thus, this is the coming time where I discover where those wretches whose genes, which is the epigenetic lot, has damned them to a sterile end. Their final instar molt has failed. No final functional bud. Wings are shriveled and unfunctional, rendering them mute since the, their stage in the woods. They have no romance, and the grass are weeds. The insect birds are constantly replete. We'll pick up the, the non aerial bugs, kind of herd as well as any oven, bullet, or gaseous umber of death. But here in nature, the tree operating are a true beneficial result, calling the inferior. I am Hitler, picking up the healthy, sacrificing the able, the superior for a self serving end. Ooh, so much wow. for the locusts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been saying I about probably about, about 200 a day feeding, by, feeding everybody. My part of my is my dogs are always out in the yard snuffing along. Yeah, my dogs kind of love them. Oh, well, my dogs adore them. I mean, just it's, it's really quite barbaric. <laughs> 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 you didn't know the dogs ate? No. Baskerville People eat them. Snarfed them up like a vacuum cleaner. Oh, the cats just fly into the air and catch them. Do they? Oh, oh yes. It's wonderful to watch. My cats are like them. Our next door neighbor has some like them. Them. Yeah. You I'm sure they are. Well, the other edibles, though, you're not down with from a house. They say not to eat them because they're full of mercury. Only if you're down with from a power plant. Yeah, up and down, then you're probably fine. If you're downwind from a power plant. Oh, we're not. Because the mercury's from cold burning. It's just sip. What is ice? Oh, it's dry. Juice. Bug juice. Eclair. Yeah. Eclair is what? Bug juice. It's their version of blood. I see. Okay. I've always heard Icor. You, you've heard Icor? I've never heard Icor before. Mm -hmm. Icor, Icor. You say tomato, I say Milton. potato. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have another? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have several. No, Milton. <laughs> Milton, yeah, you do. Milton, do you have another poem? You don't have another one? Another to coffee give to give me? When you arrive late, you are short shame. Yes. <laughs> okay, I uh, <clears throat> I've been wanting to do a um, kind of a saga. I, 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 you mentioned you had a long poem. I have a long poem, and um, as you know, I like to play with words, and so and they also write about nothing. So this is a saga about nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with, lots of funny, of with lots of funny words in it. Everything came from nothing. Then yeah. Well, practically nothing. Yeah. I think this is point of very, very, very dense materials. Oh, what to do here? Yeah. I do so nice. Too. So when you... Uh, that would be more the, nothing uh, than you're allowed. <laughs> It goes from page one to the back, and then to page two. That makes sense. Oh, and they're even stapled. Yeah, they're even stapled. They're stapled. Oh. Okay? okay, so it's easy. Really? I make things easy for you. Sure. Okay. The poem is titled, Nothing at All. Once, there was nothing, full, rich, and complete. Then, suddenly, out of nowhere, something appeared. Yes. And it was really something. <laughs> Nothing, being fully aware, noticed. Open, accepting, and welcoming, it invited something in. <laughs> and it was beautiful. The beginning, a perfect match. Balanced harmony, a team together. Nothing could not exist without something, everyone shouted. <laughs> and now all will be as one. Harmony reigned in the fullness of all. And it was good. Time and distance receded and separateness waned until, alas, something started to stir. Wait, I need more, something said. Surprised, yet open, nothing responded. What do you mean? What could be lacking? Now, here is everything. Something looked deep into nothing and seeing only emptiness moaned, anything. I'll take anything. <laughs> but there is no need for anything, was nothing's reply. What's here now is already all that is. Oh, look at you, some cried something. At least you've got something. But me, I've got nothing. <laughs> something could not conceive reality. All it saw was empty space. And so it ventured off in search of 
anything. Nothing in its completeness remained patient, whole, while something split. It was painful to watch this quest by something for more, and then still more, and with each new thing, something's desires only increased, satisfaction unachieved. With time, it became evident to everyone, something's amiss. They noticed there was no harmony, no peace, as something struggled with attachments, with possessing, with insatiable desire. Something charged ahead, oblivious to its division. More, more, that's the answer, there must be more. But as still more and then some was sought, the beauty of even less was lost, and dis-ease prevailed. <laughs> but then, now, soon, as abruptly as arrival, as unexpectedly as departure, something stopped. What's this? Everyone asked. I don't know, was all that could be spoken. Uncertainty and restlessness prevailed. Wait, listen, something told him. Maybe there is an answer to this endless stream of desire. And with those words, something was becoming present. There was a deepening realization. What is it? What do you see? They asked. Out of profound silence came something's response. Oh, actually, nothing. Nothing at all. As something was awakening, awareness grew, and all was becoming apparent. What's happening? They wondered. Yes, tell us now. What will satisfy? Of course, something said, then paused. Just nothing. Here and now, nothing is happening. And as awareness rose, something finally proclaimed, that's it. I know now here, nothing truly satisfies. And in the ever-deepening union and stillness of all, anything that something ever wanted was gone. And there was everything in being with nothing. Nothing at all. It sort of reminds me of Abbott and Costello yeah. doing who's on first. Yeah, that's what it was I was good That was fun. You, know, you read it so well. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it just is a wonderful story. Yeah. <laughs> I had fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Of course, the physics of it is even more confounding. Because, because uh, as the Big Bang grew, it, it created space, which is, is, not, is tautological. And it makes That's sense. Quite, Babies' brains do. When is the brain uh, the cells large enough? Yeah, when they're um, unless they've got the hypocephaly. Uh, yeah. And the physicist Kraus, Leonard Kraus, wrote a book a subtitle of which: How can there be something from nothing? You know, intriguing topic. Who, who wrote it? It's good. Who wrote it? Kraus, uh, Lawrence Kraus, is it the physicist? well-known, often on TV type of physicist. In fact, um, one of the things that inspired this, was, I, and maybe it's the same book, it was called Why Is There Anything it, it, Rather Than Nothing? It, it was a, you know, why is there anything at all? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's so the it's eternal question, yeah, really. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Is why shouldn't there be? It was before the Big Bang. And or God. <laughs> so that's the question. Why is there something? I don't know. I think the Aborigines have the answer. It's all sleep. <laughs> it's all what? Sleep? Sleep. 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 Okay. Sleep is good. All right. Jamie. They're still coming. Oh. There may be another one. Bill's trying to create another one. Well, there, I think we're finally down to the book it's supposed to be. Everybody have one? And one it's extra. Left over. Okay. Welcome back, Marianne. Thank nice you. to see you over there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is a true story. Oh. Locked in. Screaming as she fell, there was no one to hear. Just an old woman lying prone on the concrete floor of the OU garage. Mm -hmm. No one to help her. A cell phone left at home. Will I die on this floor, she thought. 
crawl, scratch, scream. She could see her car, and she began to inch toward it. Pain throbbing, she pulled herself up. Luckily, the car was unlocked. She managed to get inside, start the car, and get it headed toward the exit. The gate required a ticket, which she managed to pay. And then she screamed all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my. That's sick. Oh, my. That's One what happened. Point, uh, breaking your hip is what this is it. Oh. And, of course, this is a ticket with no person. Right. 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 No, there was nobody. Right. Yeah. That was it. Nobody yeah. anywhere. So. Terrible. Wow. Yeah. Made me think Especially of horrible was it. Happen. Remember Helen Baker? Oh, yes, yes. Who had a heart attack yes. and, had, and crawled up her driveway where yes. her house was on the hill. Oh, yeah. Yep. Not just a gravel driveway. I was in oh. now. When was that, Marianne? Um, almost two months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how are you doing now? I am. Progressing. No, I am. I don't mean that to be <coughs> anything but that. I mean, it's very difficult when you break a hip. You mm -hmm. have to go. I mean, some people go one or two years oh. before they're. When it's back in the good place, huh? Yeah. And the only, the only, only bed rest is yeah. really functional as, as, as they help. No, bed rest is no. not functional oh. in this case. Yeah. Walking. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Move, move, move. Yeah. yeah, keep it moving. Mm -hmm. So, very outerly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I miss being here very much, but I, I still can't walk by myself. So, I can do now with the cane, but I can't, you know, I can't drive. Mm -hmm. So, here's a thought that occurred to me when you, you read that you have automatic transmission in your car. Right? Yeah. I had a manual transmission. I'd probably have one hell of a time so, trying to get back with the broken hip. Yeah. Do you think if you had screamed while you were in the garage, <coughs> you might have Excuse attracted me. attention? No, because I was in the garage. She did scream. I was the only person in the garage. The only one. And I screamed at the was top it, of my lungs. Was it late at night or a your time? Or About 10.30 at night. And why were you all by yourself so late? Yes, I had been. She's a big girl. <laughs> I want to know why you went home and not to the hospital. I know. I ask myself that every day, but anyway, I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I was just by myself, and I was delirious, really. Mm -hmm. sure. And I just went home she was in the shock. whole time, and, oh. and Don was Don was there, and he he couldn't figure out what that noise was, <laughs> and I couldn't get out of the car. So finally, he figured it out that something was happening. <laughs> so what made you fall? Scared scared. Make a lot of I don't know. Trip over I frankly do not know. Uh, something was on the floor that, you know, caused me to slow. Well, could it could just be a, a ripple in the in the concrete. Yeah. yeah. So. so sometimes I've heard that uh, the fall doesn't break the hip. The hip breaks. And then the person falls, and maybe that was the case. It is spontaneous break. It don't know. know. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. you know. We'll um, never know. But we're glad that you made it, and your vocal Thank cords you. survived, as well as your literary <laughs> powers. <laughs> Thank you. And you could have been totally wiped out after all. Yeah. Just having all your creativity. Go so, should I tell you that tomorrow's June the first? Today. No, today or no, today today first. first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know. But I had already marked it this that, way. I got the <laughs> so, I decided I not to, to play like crawl, scratch, scream really 
Yes. Grabbed me. <laughs> it's a good thing to write about uh, it. Yeah. And it's yeah. just to feel like at least the power of saying what happened mm -hmm. in these mm -hmm. parts that you know. Yeah. So there may be more poems about it, huh? No. <laughs> That's done. About, That's done. About the healing. The healing. There's some progress. It's, a real long poem. Yeah. So. Okay. I think I'm missing one extra, so I'll give it to whoever it is if you want this crazy thing. Here are two for you. Do you want them? Still coming? No, oh. no, that, that, that's <laughs> it. That'd be it. Sorry. And, yeah, I have one. I need to give another one. For one short? But I have well, to keep this okay. one for now. Oh, we're sure. <laughs> we can share. It's <laughs> not the first time. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, and Robin, I want to tell you, um, I've been in touch with, with Mary Ann's daughter, and she really appreciated that you brought home some children oh. with Mary Ann. Oh. We just had fun doing that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dizzy transitions and backward sneeze. I sit on the dock and wait for the water to impress me with a singular show, a carousel score of dizzy transitions, tra tranquil moments or clamorous fanfare, the influence of the lake's weather enchantment of the fins and feathers. A lone heron stands on the water's edge, slow-stepping travel with backwards knees. <laughs> a small bird repeatedly dive-bombs her head. Too close to a nest, she scrunches her neck and slips low under the honeysuckle vines. A growl from the sky, raindrops and lines. The drivel makes the drizzle makes polka dot bubbles. Faster they come, skipping and popping. Silverfish spin in the awakening water. Flat bottom boats and upturned canoes, red, yellow, blue, the fiberglass sings. A downpour on the metal boats, pulsing pings. A sheet of rain, the wind blows sideways. The shelter house is useful, is useless shield. Then abracadabra, a transformation. So slow I can count the dribbling drops. Threatening clouds hustle out of the way, a pearly light sky and blue on display. I shiver my way to my window down car. I steer through the wrong way sign. The hot pavement sends up a twisty mist. Und undulated veils are dancing around me. Gone in a minute, swallowed by rays of glistening sun and a brand new day. This was one of those news. days when everything happened instantly and changed completely and uh -huh. then back and then another way. <laughs> and you captured that. <laughs> that was, yeah, that's great. Oh, um, so if anybody wants another copy. Is this imaginary or in Oh, no, it's, it was that, uh, yeah, that was completely yeah. what happened. On wow. the scene somewhere, not an actor. Sprouts run. Oh, it was a show. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's good when you see steam billowing off your porch roof, though, so it's fire. Mm. You know, there's no difference, you know, other than smell, but, you know, it looks like a very light smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've had a lot of weather lately. Yeah. <laughs> we Every sure day, have. in fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most nights, nice too. Yeah. 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 Except it's dark at night, you can't see it. It started drying, right? The night was overcast. <laughs> I like um, the hot pavement sends up a twisty mist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, and and the uh, lone heron's slow stepping travel with backwards knees. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like that about them. Yeah. For uh, for uh, when the um, blue herons first came to Stroud's Run. I was so infatuated with them that I was out there all the time, and I was always trying to to mimic how they walked and everything. But the backwards knees problem yeah, part of that, that was the part. problem. Yeah. I really couldn't do it. I tried to <laughs> present these things to my kids. You know, like I am now going to be this creature, but you know, the knees it just didn't do it. <laughs> It's like that little corn, sit down in front, sit down in front, they screech at me, go in, egad, how can I sit down in front, that ain't the way I've been. That's great. Yeah. It is like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Rhino's Lament. As I was floating on the Zambezi, an otter called me ugly. Water snake uttered ungainly as it slithered by. I was struggling with a tear when a knobby croc came by, cocked a crooked eye, and said, Hippo complex, a classic case. Try Serengeti, now that's your space. <laughs> <laughs> what was the inspiration? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Were you in the jungle? No. <laughs> what inspired it? Uh, I think and this was started, um, I worked on it, and my kids and I used to ex send out each other titles of poems, and then the person would write the poem. So I, I, the last two lines are my son Tom's. <laughs> so it was interesting to see how we each that's fun. did the poem. <laughs> that's, cute. that's a great idea. Yeah, that's, that's fun. It's like yeah. uh, it's like the exquisite corpse um, in the, the surrealist movement. They would cover up. It was like one of the, their parlor games, right? They would um, the artists would uh, <laughs> would uh, have a piece of the. Uh, the corpse or the person that they would paint, but they would cover it up so none of them would see what they were painting, and then they would unveil it at the end, and then they have an exquisite corpse. So it's kind of like that. You know, it's like blind, like, wow. Almost like blind writing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great one. I love it. It's, it's a picture. She was an actual person, though. But you don't know. It was Sven's. Sven, I need your old copies of Mother Jones. <laughs> I think there's more there. Yeah, there is fine. One more coming. There it goes. Thank you. Oh, where are mm -hmm. the yeah. We've got a few extra. Oh. Okay. Oh, nice bomb. Thank you. Not as oh, bad as me, know. but. <laughs> We've been to Mumbai. Wow. First impressions on Mumbai. An urban echo of an earlier time, when avenues and boulevards stretched until they kissed the water, when unassuming placards on sturdy stone facades whispered street names with no pride, when heat upon metal gave a harsh, uninviting waft of canned fish left to rot. When splatters of pearl white scat on car roofs and asphalt lanes warned passersby and strollers of a pigeon nest above. Mm -hmm. When taxis perched, discovered, and careened, carrying the privileged, the lucky, the diligent. When pavement glistened a wish for a prosperous future and a renowned past. This echo is nothing more than a sonic peep in a cavernous memory. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I was only there for like two days. <laughs> two days? <laughs> two or three days. Was it 124 degrees then? It what? was really hot in May, yes. <laughs> May is not the right time to go to India. <laughs> Can you imagine? It was hot. It was very hot. Well, all the changes in the name is interesting to me. You know, it's from <clears throat> Byzantium, Constantinople, Istanbul. And... Mm. I had always heard that. Um, Whenever the people who go to India say it's a, an overload on your senses, all your senses are filled smell, sight, sound, mm -hmm. uh, 
the feelings of the air around you. I mean, it's really an overload. It is. It was very much. It was. It's. You know, I'd go back at, at a different time of the year, <laughs> and I probably also remember to drink my own water. Not your hair on your butt. I got you, sick. You drink water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I because I I had, been, I had been living in Thailand for five years at the point, so I was like, oh, my stomach can handle it. And my nope. boyfriend and I, he'd been living in Thailand for over ten years, and so we went to like one of those mom and pop shops, and even the Indian families had their own bottle of water. But we're like, oh, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Every restaurant had their own like sink, so you could wash your hands beforehand. But we but we also got the water from we got their tap water, uh -huh. uh, uh, and then you know in order to we also got some fresh fruit. But the fruit is also washed by water, <laughs> yeah. so we started brushing our teeth with bottled water. Oh. Yeah, not so fun. The hospitals aren't very clean no. either. <laughs> At least the one that I went to. Oh. Yeah, but yeah, it's very much an overload. The Georgia kale cake taste, huh? Um, no, it's fine. <laughs> we we had, the food was really good and the I don't know, but. Yeah, it's there's. I have a lot of poems from this place without, without even realizing I wrote a lot because yeah. I needed to escape some at some point. Mm -hmm. But I Sorry, recommend be... going if you really want to learn a lot about your limits. Oh, I'm intrigued. Maybe not. Street <laughs> names with no pride. Oh, they were just. It was just really. Um, it, they weren't like really big signs. It's like you had to look for them. Because it's just they were just like the Nelson Bill the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I could name a number of Ohio towns. <laughs> yeah. 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 I like the boulevards kissing the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a little lot of beautiful pieces here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I brought enough for everybody who responded saying they'd be here. Plus, I think there's a couple of extras, so I do want them because I have some people in mind. Um, a while back, I had mentioned that I wanted to write a poem that I would like to see turned into a song. And this, this weekend, I heard a song, and I thought, huh, I think um, that would be an interesting thing to deal with. It was called Dear Younger Me by a group uh, called Mercy Me. And then while driving here this morning, and I don't know if I'll say her name correctly, but um, Jacqueline Yassar, I, I forget how to say her family name, but anyway, she was singing a song similar about how we are messed up and need help. Thank you. So, this is, and I sent this to a friend of mine who is a songwriter. She's a professional counselor, which may come in handy to help with this. Broken Pieces. Life can often be filled with many hurts and pains. Innocence is lost, and the child carries huge chains. Bondage, shame, disgrace, disgust, brokenness, guilt. The result of the experience often is a life that will wilt. A vibrant child now crawls inside themselves, trying to bury the images. Sadly, oftentimes, what is produced is burning and scarry, scarring sc carcinogens. A young child was not designed to carry the weight of others' misdeeds. For an adult's moment of pleasure, the recipient for a lifetime bleeds. Words never spoken, sworn to secrecy, a special relationship. No. One feels isolated. One thinks they're undesirable, unworthy, damaged goods, unlovable. All of this truly is a big, fat lie that caused one inwardly to die. You were not to blame. Refuse the shame. There's one who can make it go away. Into outer darkness it must go and stay. Coping, hoping. The thoughts should not be a reproach may not cause more self-reproach. Stamp them, stamp them out as one would rid themselves of an ugly, disgusting cockroach. Oh. Allow the lover of one's soul to apply the balm of Gilead, the oil of grace. Be cleansed from others' wrongdoing. Be purified. 
the weight no more to face. Take the years and years of tears and give everything. Take all your broken pieces to the only one who can make them into a mosaic, a beautiful masterpiece. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Awesome. But I would like some input. Um, in fact, I didn't, I, I wanted to ask, because on where it says a vibrant child now crawls inside, should it be themselves or themselves? Where is that? It's the second, the it second. It should either be vibrant children itself. now yeah. crawl inside themselves. Or, or themselves. a vibrant child now crawls inside himself or herself. Oh, Can I say themselves? No, no. no. It's, oh. a child. Oh. it's a child. It's a child. Oh. Well, then I have to change it down further because I made it themselves. I'm making should, my own English. Did you say you wrote this? Yeah. Yeah, it's mine. I signed it. It's my name's right there. And I even wrote Patricia Ercolino. All right. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering how you would react, Nan, <laughs> knowing that you, the background you come from. Okay, so then I should say vibrant children now crawl inside, crawl inside themselves because I don't want to make it he or she. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, you come down to one feels isolated, one thinks they're undesirable. Um, you have to make it more personal than one. How would I do that? That's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the suggestion. No, oh, it's a comment. Yeah. It, it's it's off-putting. I mean, you're building a great deal of emotion into this, and then you you neutralize it with a with a one. Mm -hmm. where, where, it is the generic one, though. Or both of them. I'm she sorry, I'm sorry. Or Nobody said it was going to be. She or try that out, a she or he. I mean, well, typically when you think, and you know, it's pretty obvious it's dealing with sexual abuse. Yeah. But typically, um, the statistics are many more females than males. So maybe so you it could would just be. try mm -hmm. she and just see if that... But there are guys. There are guys that are abused, and I, I want them to be included in it also. Change one to you because you you don't you use to okay. you are right, not right. Right. And now we're down okay. to another pronoun. Okay. So instead of so where it says words never spoken, what? sworn to secrecy. No. No. You, you feel, feel isolated. isolated. You okay. think you're undesirable. You were not to blame. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'll have to send my friend the correction. That's more personal. Thing. Saying you makes it more personal? Mm -hmm. I think definitely. Really? So you was already there, and you were not to blame. Yeah. yeah I, I wanted that to stand out, because that's one of the biggest lies. And one of the things that children carry is they feel they were to blame somehow. Well, you know, society inculcates that. Um, the thing on rape on uh, WB last yesterday in Brazil and Brazil and um, India that was just outrageous. You know, these, these, these people being these girls being gang raped, and yet they won't prosecute the offender because maybe she asked for it. Maybe she. Well, they do that in. Um, uh, they, in uh, the Arabic countries where yeah, a woman yeah. is raped and so she's it's killed your fault. Yeah. because right. she's unclean. Mm -hmm. no, it, 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 it's the law. It's the law go hang. Any other suggestions? Patricia, do you have any personal experience with what you write oh, about? Oh, the other suggestion. Well, was. depending upon how you're asking that, uh, if I, so, I you might use we in you, here occasionally. What so, you're using. You're sharing stuff and putting other people in. Sorry. I didn't hear the last half of that. You point. might use we if it's true that you have okay. some experience. Well, I, I so that you're sharing personally and pulling others into the conversation at the same time by using we. Okay. Um, I have coordinated seminars about 
sexual abuse brought a team in from outside of Athens because I knew how much sexual abuse molestation exists in this county. So, Joy, I didn't hear your comment. Oh, uh, when you in uh, the fourth line in your indebted words never spoken, one feels isolated, but then further down there's one who but that's a capital can make it all. Yeah. I mean, you can't do that. I can't uh, do that. Well, I'm changing. Yeah. You, you guys yeah. told me to put you, so I yeah. will, and that yeah. will help that because the one that is being referred because to it's is very capital. Confusing. Okay. Thank you. Any others? Yeah. You obviously felt very deeply about what you're writing, and that's appreciated. Right, thank you. Yeah, something that ought not to be. And like I said, um, I've, I've had a lot of women that have confided in me and told me not just of abuse when they were younger, but abuse in their marriage. And so it's something that um, I've tried to do what I can. I've coordinated seminars, and I feel I want to bring the team back. But the the woman that's the head of the team, I don't think I don't even know if she still does travel with the team. But she said, I don't want to go to Athens. Mm -hmm. Every time I go to Athens, something happens to my family. So that I, you know, but I, I don't blame her because you know it's. Um, you know, she's coming from a Christian perspective. Exactly. And so the last time that, that I coordinated the seminar, she, she set the, Stop standard, she set the, the uh, bar really Stop high, bleeding. saying, I want this, 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 and this. And it's okay. God, it's it's God, yeah. her, if it's God, Finally. everything you want will be there. Mm -hmm. And so she was surprised. Because one of the things was money. She knew I was the only one. It wasn't like I had an organization. I didn't have a church. I didn't have a group. You know, she knew I was the one that was coordinating this event. And so she set the bar really high. And so I called her and I said, guess what? <laughs> the university <coughs> contributed $500 honorarium. I was able to get the state, um, well, I forget what the name is, but for counselors, that if counselors attended, they got CEUs, which was the cheapest weekend CEUs that they would ever have gotten. And I told them, I told them up front, I said, it's being presented from a Christian perspective, but statistics are statistics. And you get the CEUs for it. Yeah, his son's dead. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. The Battle of Berto Plains. The men who followed the Carrion King stood fast above the Heritold Plain in defense of their homes and of their liege, knowing some of them would die this day. The Carrion King addressed his men grouped under arms in the rising dawn, their steaming breath in the crackling air lending the scene an eldritch feel. The men will fight in the coming day, come against me as a common foe, yet if I fall, there'll be no peace for those three lords will never share. Men, said the king, remember well, we fight here for our hearths and homes. Those we face owe allegiance to naught but money and leave to loot. They'll flee if their paymasters st fail to stand. Let them call to their uncouth gods. Our fight is for our very homes. If we fall, gear for your wives and babes. Assault the foe, protect yourselves, and strive to capture the wretched three who bring us all to this battle scene. The leaders, bring them all alive to me. Down through the trees on the hills to the north came Artheld, the Kyrg, and his clan's men, known for their mercenary, ruthless ways bent on destroying the Kyrian king. Facing into the rising sun, men hired by Hank the Vergoth chief, armed with sword and knife and club, had defeat of the Carian king in mind. From the south, Dorvig the Mesla came, leading his tribesmen armed and door, known for ruthlessness in war, giving no quarter and asking none. The Carian king rode among his men with, at one with them in the coming fray, 
Remember, we hold the high ground here, and they charge with the sun full in their eyes. With an almighty four king and kin, the Carians burst from their closed held ranks, forth in a three-pronged roaring charge of the invading hostile hordes. The battle raged the morning long, and sore they fought on every hand, the invaders fighting among themselves as often as they fought the Carian men. There came a time when the Vergoth's men were tangled with the were tangled with the western Kyrgyz and left their chiefs alone exposed. The Carians carried them off in chains. Strewn through the fruitful and fallow fields lay the wounded, the dying, the soul-fled dead. And still the Mesla's men fought on, intent upon their murderous goal. Till a Carian cadre, fierce and skilled, subdued those shielding the Mesla chief, captured the man and hauled him off to face their own stalwart liege. The Vergoth, the Mesla, and the Highland Kyrgyz, each acting on his own behalf, bent the knee to the Carian king and kissed the hilt of his bloodied sword. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was all in one day, right? <laughs> no, it's not just, yeah, not just one dream. <laughs> um, I don't know, there was some phrase in there that set me off. Something just came to mind. <laughs> so you have a model for this? this no. Or, uh, no, no, I think it, it, it has a nice cadence, that's for sure. Actually, what what was what it started from was that the final uh, stanza: uh -huh. the Vergoth and Misla and the Highland Kyrie, each acting on his own behalf, bent the knee to the Kyrian king by Milton and kissed the hilt to the sword. By Milton, see you. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know where that came from, but that sort of started it all off. Well, you know, it's this is kind of reading I do, and the songs I listen to, and mm -hmm. the way my mind works, and mm -hmm. what I drink. No, not what I drink. <laughs> <laughs> Rog or mead? Mm -hmm. oh, Patricia, for what it's worth, it was very disturbing to me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Have you saw uh, Made Up Names? Yes. Oh my very, God. Very classy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the, <laughs> the stuff of which legends are made. Yeah, yeah. the, the Arthur rise again. <laughs> well, originally I had a different word for the the Kyrgyz, but it was very close to uh, the creatures in the um, the pond, the uh -huh. Kobe pond, uh, the the Merms and the Murries, and I think that I was calling them something very close to Merms, and I thought, I don't want to do that. I want to make it a harder name. Mm. Case. Yes. yes. Mm. Um, these long poems just aren't going to work in that. And so I did you do that? Well, maybe I have to do Sorry. a book of long poems. And so that, that. A <laughs> book of long, fat oh, poems. I like that. <laughs> 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 Will you read my poem for me? If you'd like. Yes, thank Aww. you. So this is called Half Low Group, or Who Are We Anyway? You it don't have to over-dramatize. <laughs> <laughs> Just the title. A common ancestor we might share passes to us a piece of history. Ancient Doggerlanders who roamed lands no longer there, left tools and artifacts now being dredged from the sea. Like Atlantis, this landmass fed and clothed its citizens until a huge underwater landslide destroyed all. If it was 8,000 years ago, so what? How has evolution been made better or worse by this disaster? What DNA was lost, never to be recovered, will be missed as time slides into the past. Nothing new is added to the gene, only adaptations, variations on a theme. How short this human memory, how unreliable 
what does Haplo group, what does that come from? Or what it is a refining of uh, the definition of the genetic, your genetic heritage. It takes it down a little finer than just typing. And if you go to the uh, Wikipedia uh, and look under that label, they show you maps of how finely drawn they, they are making these determinations about who lived where, when, and yeah, what, it's, and, it's and half, how you get from one place to another. Whether they're chromosomal pairs, it's individual chromosome. Yes. Whether yes. there's a pair. Yes. And so they can, by typing that, it's easier to find out where the population came from and how they merged. <clears throat> we really don't know how many civilizations, how many layers there have been on this earth. I mean, no, of just, course not. It's, you know, when you think of the very short time that humans have been. You mean very busy. Only 6,000 years. I know, mm -hmm. very short period of time. They're very, very busy. And, uh, Fornicating. You know, it's an incredible place. We want to live there, though. Much longer. How many of the cicadas have been there? Pearl diving. Is there any more? Just one sheet headed pearl diving. But there's plenty of them out there. So. Everybody equipped? After all this. Uh, Frivolous stuff today, I think it's time for something serious. <laughs> so, pearl diving. Some handle jackhammers to alter streets. Some bake cookies and other treats. Some trade stocks. They charge large fees. Big pros hit golf balls off tiny tees. All will work for income or self-reward, efforts never deemed criminal or untoward. The level of personal satisfaction may be weak, although the dollar income may hit a peak. There are artists who starve but keep on working, the, the demands of their muse they're never shirking. Yet there is labor as critical as anyone's wishes. There's no greater satisfaction than from washing the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> My personal credo. Dishes a lot. He does. Oh, good. Oh, that's good. And, and the other one. <laughs> the other one of great seriousness. The rhymester at work today. You have noticed. Our father, which art in old mold. Sing your song, select your hymn to hum. It's time to pay obsequience to holy bacteria. <laughs> At the base of the tree of life are millions of bacteria. They're on your knife and fork, on your cheek, always near you. <laughs> they are the oldest, having so long been around. It was they that set the conditions we awakening humans then found. So hail to that bacterium lurking in the <laughs> old crud. Though but a tiny speck, it's the ancestor of our blood. <laughs> <laughs> Did you save yourself one? Oh. Okay, our fond memories on Memorial Day of mom, mother, grandma, granny, granny great, out to check it. You were always at home for us kids, us four, taking care of our needs for food, clothing, discipline, security, rest, and the comfort of our home, our nest. We fondly remember your Gestapo style for keeping order, neatness, cleanliness, your sanity, for keeping our expenditures within our family income, for keeping us children and dad as your priority one. We fondly remember your styles of dress for your formal attire that would impress, 
for your home attire that maximized simplicity and minimized duress, that provided you with adequate rest. We fondly remember your perseverance and your endurance to get each task done, even when it was not no fun. In your latter years, you continued, life is not the same. We fondly remember the respect you gave our extended family, accepting us with conversation and being very friendly. We respected, you respected our privacy, our arguments, our personalities, accommodating our affections, our diversity, and your scoliosis frailties. You've given us hope to live in the two hour 90s and a vision for us as a man and wife. We miss our friend, our mom, our great granny, and mentor for our life. That would be scoliostic failures. Okay. <laughs> okay. Frailties. I didn't know that word. <laughs> In the. Um, I think it's the second stanza, though. I'm not sure how the stanzas are written. The one that starts, in your later years, you read it in your latter years. No. Do you mean yeah. latter or later? I guess either one. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you have is that you later can't is get better. away with that. <laughs>